Hey folks, so we're presently underneath Annabelle, my 53 Studebaker champion, and what we're doing is we're checking out her fuel system to see what sort of shape it's in. Um, this is the first major actual piece of restoration work on this particular car, and the reason why we're starting with this is that when I brought her home from storage, her fuel filler rubber line burst, dumped gasoline all over the place, so can't really drive her until I can put gas in her. So we're going to start at the back end of the car here, and you can see behind me the gas tank. Now, the first thing I like to do is take a look at the gas tank. You can see that there's goo all over it from just years of road grime, debris, and guck and gack, but when you do a tap, hear that the tank is really structurally sound so I'm not too worried about the tank and that even includes this dent right here now what I did see that I was kind of unhappy about was some let's see if I can get a shot of it was the wiring going into the sender on the top of the tank I see some old electrical tape on there and it's kind of loose around that area so that always you know gives me the heebie-jeebies fuel lines are also solid, however, they also have a pretty nasty coating of road grime and debris. What's important to note when you're looking at this is that the fuel lines are fitted, bent, and they have connectors at either end. So you follow the fuel line back, it goes up and over, has a clip up top there by the brake line, comes down, has another clip on the frame right there and then goes to the outside and down the car. So we'll trace that down in a moment as soon as I can get myself out from underneath here. But the other thing I did want to look at was that fuel filler hose line and you can see that it's been setting on the frame for a long time and that rubber's just shot. So that rubber piece will also have to be completely replaced. The fuel filler tube also has a lot of old debris on it so again it's dirty. It's 50 years old so it goes. Now you can see as we follow the fuel line down the frame of the car that it is contiguous, there are no holes, but again, it's all goobered up. And so the end of our first piece of fuel line is actually right there behind the tire. At this stage, what it actually does is wraps in and around over the suspension and down across the front of the tank. Where, I mean, down in front of the cross, this front of the suspension, where it terminates over here at the far side down low. And what that terminus connects to is a piece of rubber line. That rubber line then runs up to the fuel pump. Here you can see the fuel pump, you can see the uh, shade tree vapor barrier or vapor lock protector to keep the unit from vapor locking from the heat of the exhaust then our line finally runs up to our carburetor so based on what we're looking at here so based on what we're looking at here um, to do this correctly we're going to need to pull the tank clean it reseal it get all the crap off of it, paint it. We're going to have to pull all the fuel lines. We want to replace those. We're going to have to pull the fuel pump and either rebuild it or replace it. And at the same time, I want to build a better heat baffle around the fuel pump so that we don't get vapor lock, but it also doesn't look like it was done under the shade of a tree. Um, so in terms of planning for our next session, we're going to need to get fuel line fittings so we can bend our fuel lines. We're going to need to tank repair kit. Um, so we can seal the interior of the tank, some pour 15 and some chassis coat to paint the tank, um, and then I have to find out whether or not I can get a rebuild kit for the fuel pump. So that will be our research for our in-situ project during this week, and then next weekend we will go ahead to uh, aggregate the parts together and do the work. Now the important trick to doing this is you figure out what you need to do a week in advance that gives you the time to go get all the parts that you need so that on the weekend when you're going to do the work, you have everything you need there ahead of time, you know exactly what you're going to do, you know exactly what your plan is, so that hopefully you can get it done in a day or day and a half.